situation, I mean, currently in England, if you guys haven't seen on the news, Britain is burning, guys. That's because it's full of, unfortunately, refugees and people coming in. They've taken them on board. Like, I'm quite scared that Europe's going to be on fire soon. You know, if you look at Portugal and you look at all these other countries that have just allowed these people to come in with no added value, should I say. But they don't have any housing. They don't have any food. You know, there's, there was a there was a quite a scary video of somebody just walking in Portugal and like the whole street is filled with refugees from the nights. Like, I don't mind people taking in refugees and stuff like that. But as soon as it starts impinging on one, your tourism and, and the money coming in, like, where's it going to go? What, to what end? Mm. No, especially if you don't have certain things in place. I mean, <clears throat> America is probably the only country on earth that can deal with excessive refugee migration. Because they are a superpower, they got such a large economy. I mean, those dudes take in migrants like no one. No one on this earth takes in as much migrants as America. If I'm lying, I don't see um, the Middle East, for example, taking in as nearly as many migrants as America, which is ironic given the fact that there are some hectic situations in certain parts there where dudes need a new home. You know, they need, they need to come to the UAE. They need to go to Saudi, for example, or certain parts of Saudi, etc. cetera. Um, yet there doesn't seem to be as much support that side as there is there. But just to get into the background of the situation, guys, there was a horrible attack that took place where a 17-year-old male entered a Taylor Swift-themed dance party where there were some kids there, and he stabbed and killed three, injured like nine, if I'm not mistaken. What a fucking coward. Bring what him to Israel. We'll sort, sort him out. Absolute piece of shit. Who the and fuck kills can... children? Like, on purpose. Bitch-ass niggas, dude. Bitch-ass niggas. End of that discussion. frustrates me to the point where I don't, I just don't, I, yeah. You know where, what? I mean? Where is this guy? Where Where is this guy? Hey, two thousand pound Bob, dude. Just tell so me the, where he is. I'll, I'll fucking fly there now. No, that's what happened. That's the instant reaction, which is completely understandable. You know, your community has been violated and children's lives have been taken by a coward. Now they found dude, arrested dude, and some info got out. It basically said... So an undocumented migrant decided to go into a Taylor Swift dance class today and stabbed six little girls. That's right, somebody arrived in the UK on a boat. Nobody knew who he was. Nobody knows where he's from. The media is, of course, hiding the fact that this is a 17-year-old male. They don't want to highlight how ridiculous it is that we allow military-aged males, combatants, to flood our shores. I don't see any protests in the UK. I don't see anybody complaining. Nobody's outside of the school. Nobody's outside the police station. The soul of the Western man is so broken that when the invaders slaughter your daughters, you do absolutely fucking nothing. And England lost their shit. Marches against illegal migrants and the small boats crisis. Marches against Islam. And I'm not talking about radical Islam. I'm talking marches against Islam. Full stop, dude. You see how, like, you see how bald-faced the Hamas protesters were against Judaism? It's as mm. bald-faced against Islam at this stage. And you don't usually see this type of stuff. Huh? It turns out, though, that all of this was pretty much misinformation. Which yes, part of the it? guy. Yes, he is Rwandan. However, he is not an illegal immigrant. He didn't come over in a small boat. He was born in Cardiff. So technically, he's Welsh, dude. <laughs> he's, he's a Welshman. And he's not even Muslim. So right. someone took this specific incident, horrific, revolting incident. And switched the, t and switched the narrative. Dude, they just... And they literally added like five percent of misinformation dude they served it up with five percent of misinformation from and a famous song happened. now just add a little bit of spice 
<laughs> the same thing happened in South Africa in 2008 when we had those exact same xenophobic attacks you spoke on, where you basically found yourself in a pressure cooker situation. The, the world economy just fell through its ass in 07. <laughs> Jobs were kicking it. Dudes, inflation was bad. Um, jobs were hard to come by. Education was inaccessible. And South Africa being the America of Africa, we take in immigrants, okay? We're, we, we let a lot of our fellow African brothers and sisters come. You know, we understand Africa's, there's some fucked up leaders there that don't know what they have. And they promise their people the world and deliver them rampant poverty, violence, crime, etc. But what happened was a certain attack, I can't recall the exact event, but there was an attack by a foreigner that sparked a couple days of incessant rioting in South Africa that ended up killing, if I'm not mistaken, like 300 people at the time. And it basically an actual attack that took place. Someone seized it. So someone hateful towards foreigners seized it, added their own little spice and threw it back there. And a whole lot of people lost their lives. Foreigners' shops were burnt. Innocent people trying to make a living were killed due to that. And the unfortunate thing is that exact thing has happened here where everyone was mobilized for the right reasons based on the wrong information. And the extremists who have organized these marches now need to give people a reason to stay. And this is where you're going to start seeing some wild rhetoric come up and you're seeing guys now like, yeah, well, it's like, but this dude wasn't an illegal immigrant. Yeah, well, the guy that did it a couple years ago was. And it's like, 100% he was. He was a piece of shit. And he stabbed and killed people on London Bridge, screaming the infamous phrase. What's the phrase, Joshua? We will not be repeating that phrase on this <laughs> podcast. So I refuse. there is that issue. There is that issue where uncontrolled migration can let some bad people in. And the fact of the matter is, a place like the UK is in the crown jewel of the West. And radical Islam sees the West as its mortal enemy. Meaning that people want to kill you. If the, the UK, people want to see the UK burn that aren't from the UK. And those people can come into the UK. If you don't watch carefully, and we'll have a repeat of that fucking train bombings and bus bombings and all of that bullshit that was happening a couple years back, which is the last thing that we want as far as just the, the narrative that it paints, because again, it just breeds hate. For example, do, Josh, dude, if someone is born in, so in this case, right, Rwandan dude... His parents, of course, immigrated to the UK. He was born in Wales. Do you think that makes him Welsh or not? Absolutely. 100%. I do too. Exact same question. This question is faced by a lot of countries. South Africa being one of the most racially charged places on earth. It's faced with this a lot. A lot of people trying to stoke and hate. Trying to stoke hate and say... White people were, aren't from Africa, which is retarded. If you know anything about fucking history, history yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's you know, a dichotomy just, though, right? Because, because you have a religion and then you have a culture and then you have a culture that you want to choose to be a part of, whether or not you want to go into mm. the complexity of things or not, right? Yes, yeah. you're from Rhodesia, so, so you have some preference on a, a specific religion if that's you. But if you've been living in Cardiff for your whole entire life years. You, yeah. you know ex you know exactly the type of culture that is surrounded yeah. you because being in, in a place for 17 years you know you know how things operate unless you live underneath a fucking rock in cardiff oh 100 percent, dude 
Like, unless you stay in a Hamas tunnel. Like, literally, like, Hamas has got, like, a... So, so what you're saying is, 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 is Hamas sent an Amazon spade to this guy in Cardiff and he started digging a tunnel, right? I think it was. Yayasin was hiding in this guy in Cardiff's basement. What? <laughs> <laughs> Misinformation. Misinformation. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, it's, it's horrible. Um, but please, let's not... Let's do our best not to jump to conclusions. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, in this exact case that we're talking about, the Prime Minister of Britain got hoodwinked. <laughs> he got hoodwinked as far as information. He thought that this dude is undocumented and what, and they throw a camera in his face and he's fucking Prime Minister. He just got elected. He has to say some shit. And he said some shit. And he said some horrible shit about, he basically called everyone out there on the street protesting right wing, which is also not right. It's just, there's some elements, yes, but not everyone out there is right wing. There's some real problems in Britain right now. You know, the pound isn't just expensive in other countries. It's also, it's killing, it's killing the noble people in the streets, dude. So... He even got caught up in it because someone immediately put information out there because these days it's more important to be first than to be factual. And it um, unfortunately has led to a situation that's gotten way out of control. We hope the police and dudes can calm down um, and we can focus on the real problem, which is how the fuck this guy got to this point. Being born in Britain. <laughs> born in Britain. Born in fucking Wales, dude. Wales doesn't really strike me as like... Uh, I, I hear well, it's a bit quiet you, out you, there. You, you must remember that there is those online communities where the Islamic extremists are trying to... Um, infiltrate. In, not infiltrate. I think they're just trying to... Well, they might be. What I'm saying is that they're trying to convert non-islamic people into islam right it's all the conversion ratio with with religion in general I like the new story that came out about it but an only fans chick that has now turned islam she sold all her clothes and now she's running content becoming islamic and so, and the main comment that i found interesting was like the some dude was like i give it three months so it's, it's, it's you know, I don't know. If, if anybody has any more information on that give us give us the give us the update when you know what happens on that? I don't know what the chick's name is. It was an OnlyFans or a content creator, some description. Very provocative looking woman. She still has all her provocateur content up, but now what? she decided to move Islamic because so it's said, now it's, now it's trending. It's trending this. But when you said give her three months, did you mean give her three months or give Iran three months to? <laughs> uh, That's a good question. That's, good, that's a good question. Three, three months is, is statistically how long it would take for the conversion to happen, so. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip from the OG session. For the full episode, visit the It's Friday Forever YouTube channel. Whilst you're there, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. And I'll catch you in the next one.